You're listening to the One Man Show Network. Welcome to the MMA Fight Picks Podcast with your host, Aaron Weinbaum. Hey kids, and welcome to the MMA Fight Picks Podcast. I am your host, Aaron Weinbaum, and today, today, tonight, we are picking fights for UFC 231, which will be this Saturday, December 8th, at the Scotiabank Arena in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Now, I'm sorry I've been gone the last few weeks. I was out of the country with my wife in beautiful, beautiful Antigua. Uh, I came back with some sort of nasty cough or whatever. I, I was on the men, and then I got on the airplane, and for some reason, it's all in my ears. So I'm about half deaf, so no guests today. Um, I, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to hear him half the time. Uh, I am on the men, though, so hopefully I will be uh, in fighting shape to watch fights on Saturday. And also, these trips are when I basically, I devote all my time to my wife. So there's no MMA, there's no Twitter. Uh, it's just uh, the once a year where uh, it's whatever she wants to do. So, uh, well, well, who am I kidding? It's most of the time anyway. But it's none of my MMA stuff or or any of that. So for those of you that want to join the fun and pick some fights this is also streaming live on the Periscope. Feel free to chime in. First up, we have Eric, your boy, Anderson, against Elias, the main event, Theodoro, the main, of course, meaning the hair, the fantastic hair of Elias. All right. Eric Anders, he he was doing real well. He... Uh, he had won a bunch of fights at middleweight, and then he stepped up to fight Leota Machida. It was a split decision. I thought he probably won that fight. Um, I mean, he beats Tim Williams, and right away, this is August, less than a month later, he turns around and fights Tiago Santos. Now, there's a few things to this. He moved up in weight to fight Tiago, um, also who was a formal, former middleweight, rather, and... It was a flight to Brazil, so he still probably had to cut a little bit of weight to get down to 205, but I didn't like this fight. I picked against him because I just thought it was too much. Uh, too big of a flight, too big of a, too big of rather, uh, I'm sorry, too short of a distance, you know, training-wise. Uh, I, I didn't like any of it. I didn't like it at all. And then you got Elias Theodoro. Um, he has two wins over Dan Kelly recently and Trevor Smith, both decisions. He uh, hasn't fought since May. For that, he loses to Brad Tavares. That's back July last year. Big deal, right? Here's the deal. I, I like them both. Usually, I pick the guy that follows me on Twitter. Elias follows the the uh, Iaquinta Realty account. But I got to go with Eric Anders on this one. I think he he's going to show he's a little more dynamic. You know, I just I just hate picking against Elias. Um, you know, he has some good wins too, and this is this is not an emotional pick. I just think I think your boy's coming back to prove something. He had a full training camp, and he takes this from Elias. No method of victory. I just think he wins. Next up, Jimmy Manawa, Tiago Santos, the aforementioned Tiago Santos. This is light heavyweight. It's kind of a strange fight. Uh, you got. Jimmy Manoa, who's coming off of two losses in a row against Tiago Santos, who just won one. So, <coughs> excuse me. Let's see. I Manoa's got some good wins. He beat o OSP, Ovincy Peru, with a punch. He beat Corey Anderson with a punch. Uh, losses to Vulcan Uzdemir, and then a decision loss against Jan Blockwitz. Then you got Tiago Santos. Um, he, I think his last fight, well, obviously, his last fight was Eric Anders. Before that, a win over Kevin Holland. Uh, and this will be his second fight at light heavyweight. You know, he did lose to David Branch in middleweight, uh, but he has a win over Anthony Smith. So don't sleep on this guy. Anthony Smith, who was at the time also a middleweight, but was cutting way too much damn weight to get there. Um, You know, ooh, this one is, I'm throwing this one up in the air. I think. I got to go with Manawa just because he's been at that weight class forever. Uh, he's proved he's bigger, stronger, but Tiago Santos lays hands on him. This could be trouble. You know, either one of these guys can end this uh, with a punch. 
But I'm going with the bigger, stronger guy here, Jimmy Manawa. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But we shall see. Next up, Cowboy Alex Oliveira against Gunnar Nelson, training partner of former champion Conor McGregor. Wow. Um, well, for all you Periscope listeners, feel free to join in and tell me I'm wrong or right or handsome devil, whatever you want to say. All right, Alex Oliveira. First of all, let's give this guy some credit because I didn't think much of him when he started fighting at welterweight. It was his debut, I think. You know, well, no, it was short notice. He got ran over by Donald Cerrone. Then he wins a couple. I think uh, he takes a short note. Yeah, he takes a short notice welterweight fight again against J- James James Mutasare, and then he beats him, Will Brooks, at lightweight. But I can't count that one because he didn't make weight. I think that was his last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, that was kind of a weird fight, too. So he fought at like 161 pounds. Not good. When he's supposed to make 155. Then a no contest against Tim Means. And he comes back and beats Tim Means, who was also no joke. He beats Ryan LaFrayer. Uh, he loses to Yancey Medeiros. Beats the great college condot, condit, rather. And then he just finishes Carlo Pertosoli. So I didn't think much of him when he came on the welterweight scene. I thought he was undersized. and just an undisciplined guy that wasn't making weight at 155. Then you got Gunnar Nelson. Who's looking ripped, by the way, and I don't know if that's going to work in his favor. I know he doesn't cut that much weight to get down to 170 pounds. I think he walks around naturally like 176 or something crazy like that. But, you know, Gunner, a jiu-jitsu practitioner, uh, his last loss was, oh, recently, I'm sorry. But before that, he loses, loses, I'm sorry, he beats Brandon Thatch. He loses Damian Maya a decision. He wins two in a row two submissions in a row against Albert Tumanoff and Alan Jabon, and then he gets caught by Santiago Ponzinibbio, who's no joke, owns a lot of wins. Um, Back to him being ripped, I don't know if that's going to work for him or against him because, you know, these guys, you, they get ripped, and they these mu- the muscles, they eat up a lot of oxygen, so I don't know how that's going to help his gas tank or not. Or maybe he's just super shredded, you know, and, and uh, we'll see. But, woo! I'm going with Gunner. I'm going with Gunner. I think uh, I think he's going to be coming back, looking to prove himself. He's taken some time off. He hasn't fought since July. And yeah, Gunner Nelson. This one is something I am super excited about. Valentina Shevchenko against Joanna Jorjacek, uh Joanna, former champion. Uh, but she's moving up weight class. You know, she fought at 115. Now they're both fighting 125. Now, what's significant about this is Shevchenko fought at 135. Two title fights um, that I know of. She, listen, look at these wins. It, this is 135 pounds. She's cutting down from this weight. She's beaten Sarah Kaufman. She's lost to Amanda Nunes. Uh, beats Holly Holm. Beats Juliana Pena. Let's not forget about Juliana. It was, you know, she was on a championship track. She very well could be again uh, when she comes back from maternity leave, or do you want to call it an MMA? Loses again to Amanda Nunez. It was a split decision. Could have gone either way. And recently, 125 pounds beats Priscilla Kasharia. Uh, I'm probably not going to get that right. Then you got Joanna Champion. She has publicly said she had trouble making the 115-pound mark. Now, recently, she hasn't said much about it. That just always sticks in my head. She almost cleaned out the division. Then comes Rose Namajunas. Now, first fight was just a flat old TKO round one. That's when she was blaming her team for the weight cutting and everything else. Switches is up, takes Rose all the way to a decision. Rose still wins. I thought Rose was clearly, uh, clearly ahead on points, and, and that was a good decision. Then she comes back and beats Tisha Torres by unanimous decision. So, she's moving up 125 pounds. I think. It's a good move. I think she's, you know, maybe she's better suited for that weight class, but I can't say that until I see it. And they have a little history. Valentina and Joanna, apparently, Joanna has lost three times to uh, Valentina in, in kickboxing, or Muay Thai. I, I can't remember which. But let's let's look this up real quick here. Uh, I'm not finding it. Oh, I am finding it. I, th- I think it's Muay Thai kickboxing. Uh, oh, here it is. Here it is. No. 
I can't I can't find it right now. All right, so I know she has beat her in some sort of competition. It's either Muay Thai or kickboxing. So this is tough. I it's hard for me to pick against someone uh, that has been beaten by someone so many times. You know, Chuck and Tito aside, don't even get me started on that. Um, I gotta go with Shevchenko. I mean, she is big and strong. She was she was strong at 135 pounds. Imagine her at 125, and she was ripped. She looked good. Um, but going out, don't count out you want a champion. I mean, I, you know, man, this could go either way, but my instinct says Valentina. We'll see. Valentina, the main event of the evening. Now, I don't like recording these so early in the week. This is only Tuesday. This fight is on Saturday. The reason I say that, Max Holloway has twice failed to make the walk to the octagon. Now, mind you, the first time was a short notice fight at 155 pounds. He was coming off an injury. This guy cuts a massive amount of weight just to get to 145 pounds. So you think, hey, no big deal. And some say this was New York stepping in saying you can't you can't go in, and New York's a little stricter in some commissions. But, you know, that was supposed to be the fight where uh, Holloway was going to take Khabib on short notice because Khabib's opponent uh, at the time had, had pulled out. So that would be Tony Ferguson, uh, the freak wire trip, I guess, from over at the Fox Studios. So... All the, uh, I'm sorry, Holloway has not made that cut down to 145 pounds since December last year. It has been over a year. Uh, let's hope he's got it in shape. Or I'm, <coughs> Excuse me. Let's hope he's got it figured out. Let's hope he makes that weight. Um, I think he's pretty disciplined. And the last time he didn't make the walk was also against Brian Ortega. <coughs> excuse me. Because he uh, was showing like concussion-like sy- symptoms and whatnot, so you never know. But Holloway, since <coughs> my gosh, excuse me, Holloway since losing to Conor McGregor <coughs> at 145 pounds has been unstoppable. I mean, you just. Basically has lost. <coughs> and that fight. <coughs> so sorry. Listen, I'm gonna get this out of I'm gonna get this out of the way <coughs> right now. <coughs> okay. I realized somehow, even though I had it muted, <laughs> it was still showing a cough. My goodness. Alright, so I'll try to edit that out, or I probably won't. Who cares? Hey, real life podcasting people. Uh yeah, he loses to Conor McGregor. That was 2013. The guy hasn't lost a fight since, beating the likes of Andre Feely, Cole Miller, Cub Swanson, Charles Rivera. Woo! Uh, Jeremy Stevens, Ricardo Lamas, Anthony Pettison, Jose Aldo twice. Twice! And then you got Brian, T-City, Triangle City, Ortega. Okay? Guy's never lost. He had a no contest against Mike De La Torre uh, because... He tested positive for some banned substance, okay? Now, let's go over his list. He's got wins over Tiago Tiago Tavares, Diego Brando, Clay Guida, Ronald Marciano, uh, Cub Swanson, but I think he missed weight for that fight. It was a short-notice deal. Frankie Egger with a punch, which I I had that for Egger, and now he's coming up against Max Holloway. Hmm. I picked against Brian Ortega in the past, and it's burned me. Um, But here's the thing. Max is the champ. Max is the champ for a reason. But T City gets his hands on you. It's tough to say what's gonna happen. Um, I don't think that Max has ever been submitted. No, never. Yes, I'm sorry. One time, Dustin Poirier, mounted triangle armbar, but that's way back in 2012. But Ortega is kind of a different kind of animal. Uh, when it comes to the grappling, now it comes down to one thing, and I've said it before, and I've said it again. Distance or kick distance, you know, whatever. If he keeps him at bay, Ortega rather, with punches and kicks, with his reach, there's not much Ortega is going to be able to do. He's going to have to duck under the punches. He's going to have to, you know, he's going to have to move around the kicks. He's going to check the kicks, and he's got to get hands on him, I think, to make this a winnable fight. But I'm not going to pick against the champ here. I'm going with Max Holloway. Uh, I don't know how, probably by, I just want to say by a KO finish. I, I, I want to say that now, and it's probably going to be in the later rounds. Max is going to probably feel him out. I'm not sure if Ortega is going to bum rush him or not. But 
if Holloway makes the walk, if he makes it there successfully, which I pray that he does, uh, I gotta pick. I gotta pick Holloway. Yeah, that's it. So in the end, I will return uh, with some fight picks real soon, probably next week. I think there's a card. Oh yes, my man, Ally Quinta taking on Kevin Lee in the very last Fox card. I'll be back to make picks for UFC Milwaukee. So until then, I'm gonna sign off. And say, Shalom. Thanks for listening. Please remember to support the podcast by visiting the affiliate links on AaronSaysWhat.com. Are you looking for a permanent home for your podcast? Well, Spreaker can do it all. Spreaker will give you your own RSS feed that you can submit to other platforms, including iTunes. Spreaker's mobile app will let you record from your smartphone, or you can use their web-based console with everything you need to record. Their podcasting plans include being able to host multiple shows at no extra charge. Got a YouTube channel? Spreaker's got you covered. You can effortlessly upload your podcast audio to your channel. You can even move your current podcast to Spreaker without losing any of your iTunes subscribers. Try any plan. Plan 30 days for free using promo code ASW.